I don't want to do either of those things. Yeah, but if you had to, though. We set the scene. We have a choice. We must decide on the correct answer. I'm Kyle. And I'm Jess. And this is If You Had To, though. Uh, We have special guest this week, Jess Evans. Hi. (laughs) Hi, Jess. Um, We've gotten rid of Nathan finally, and we've got in some fresh meat. Yeah, this is the first time I'm on the show. I'm very excited. Um, I'm very nervous. You're very nervous. Your first ever podcast as well. This is big. Brand new, yeah. Are you looking forward to it, though? Yeah, you reassured me. You've, um, yeah, I'm, I'm... Prepared to have some fun. You're prepared to have some fun. You will have some fun. I guarantee it. Yeah, no, I will. I will. (laughs) I'm sure. So I've known Jess for how many years? So many years now. Yeah. But we haven't been in contact until recently for a while uh, because um, Jess uh, does a Burns night every year. And we did our first Burns night with you when we were at uni together. Yes, it was good fun. I um, did a meal of haggis and neeps and tatties and we read some poems to each other um as a house it was really lovely and um it was my very first burns night and then i wanted to revive them and uh this being a pandemic year seemed like a good opportunity to do it virtually so um i had a really good turnout and some lovely poems were read it, yeah it was nice it was nice to see everyone from uh, we all used to live in a house together at uni and it was nice to see everyone together again and just hang out again like it was like we were back in the house yeah and it had been for so long and I hadn't spoken or reached out to any anyone really from uni days and it was yeah it was a good opportunity to and everyone was game I kind of I did bank on the fact that I, most people I figured wouldn't be doing too much so <laughs> they would have the free time at least and maybe if anything would be like well what have I got to lose kind of thing but no you're all really game and very up for it and um yeah it was really nice to have a catch up before and then do the burns night anyway and yeah. um I, I i do think that if people have said oh actually do you know I, I i really can't make it i think that there would be a sign to be like oh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe i maybe, shouldn't be uh, maybe i shouldn't have these people uh, as my friends <laughs> yeah no absolutely i probably would have definitely judged you guys and be like fine I mean I've done my bit at least you know it, it does work both ways and every we all said um it's not anyone's kind of fault we lost touch for all those years but uh it was yeah it definitely made me think I'm sure if they're like me they'll be up for it and I know I would be the same if somebody else reached out to me one of you guys uh, did that first so yeah I think yeah. it's it, I, I I think it's good if you can um, have people who you, even if you haven't spoken to them for years you just get in contact with them and have a chat and it's you just basically fall into how it was back then yeah and it's nice. yeah and it was really nice I knew you obviously you guys were all good people because having lived with you for a year and that was, was without a doubt the best year um, of my time at uni so um, all fun memories and all that so but yeah life life just gets in the way sometimes when you do lose touch with people but through the magic of you know technology we have available these days it's quite nice to it's so easy to reach out as well so the the internet was invented primarily so that we could video mm. chat oh no totally it was all leading up to this moment so exactly um, well I, I i think originally they uh, decided i think it was in uh, 1993 they decided to create the internet uh, because they knew that uh, me and nathan were going to be creating this podcast at one point yes uh-huh <laughs> And um, so they they got building it right away. I mean, they brought it out a little bit early, in my opinion. We didn't start releasing the podcast till just over a year ago. Yeah, but they had to perfect it to make sure everything would be running smoothly and there'd be no interruptions and stuff. So I feel like they they were practicing a lot to make sure it was perfect for when you guys. Yeah, I mean, when it first came out, I mean, all they had was the dancing baby and you couldn't really do anything else. (laughs) Times have changed. <laughs> so for new listeners, the premise of this show is that we create scenarios for each other, resulting in two possible outcomes. We'll discuss each outcome's pros and cons and decide definitively on the correct answer. And the answers yeah. will be 100% correct. Whatever we choose, whatever we decide out of the two choices, that is the 100% accurate, correct answer. And yeah, no, no one dispute. Will... No. 
no disputes from anyone. Okay. And I've explained this to Jess. She, 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 I've, she, she's smart enough to know. Um, she's like on par with me and Nathan. So I was like, yes, you can come on the show. She knows <laughs> like what her decision is exactly the same as ours. So 100% accurate no i'm honored to be entrusted with this this much responsibility um and i you know i do take it very seriously so um yeah I'm well in. we did have to swear you in and do the initiation yeah, that ceremony ritual thing yeah no absolutely and um that was definitely a moment when i was like yeah this is serious <laughs> a serious podcast but you assured <laughs> me that it's normal <laughs> yeah it's all it's all normal like when nathan took out the sword um and yeah. he started laying it on your shoulders yeah, the yeah. sacrifice threw me a bit, but you know, it was it was all part of the experience. So you know, yeah, people don't like goats anyway. <laughs> yeah, no. That's fine. What are you drinking, by the way? I have coffee in a, in a mug that says tea. <laughs> I have coffee in a mug that says tea. That's, <laughs> Do you have another the, mug that says coffee kind... that you only drink tea in? <laughs> I wish I did, but no, that's the kind of person I am. I drink coffee out of a mug that says tea. I don't have an actual mug that says coffee on it. No. No. They'd not come in a pair. Like, I feel like you can't just get the one that, well, I guess if you only drink tea, but. I did steal this mug. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. Which means it probably is a a lonely coffee mug (laughs) somewhere. (laughs) Yes, there's there's someone out there in the world who has to drink their tea out of a mug that says coffee. Oh, no. Yeah. We're causing unbalance in the world. Yes. Yes, you are. Yeah. No, absolutely. No, I'm I'm not drinking anything exciting. Just drinking water at the minute. But um, I've got my reuse me cup I got free at a festival (laughs) that's for for, this is a uh, audio platform so people can't see this is a glass with a giant mouth on it and it's very bright and and colorful yeah yeah and it says reuse me at the (laughs) wow my uh, cup of choice I mean yeah if I had a if I had a cup with a giant mouth with a pair of (laughs) headphones I would drink from that every day yeah no absolutely I was I I just like it so much I was like yeah I'm (laughs) So one of those cups they have at the festivals, they had like three or four designs, I think it was, but this was by far the most superior. Um, so I was lucky. <laughs> now, one thing that people need to know about you, Jeff, is that you are always late. Yeah. You're late for oh, meetings. Sure. You're late for work. You yeah. get fired from work and then you go to the interview, but you're late for that. So you don't get the job. You know, you're late for the bus. You're late for the cinema. Well, when, when the cinema is open, at least. <laughs> really late for that now yeah and there's nothing you can really do about it you try your best you get up early you set the alarms but you just you can never get anywhere on time which is a shame but this week you received a special package in the post addressed primarily to you and you opened it up and inside you found a watch a pocket watch Oh, pocket watch. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you've seen a uh, kids show from the early 90s. <laughs> it was called Bernard's Watch. Uh, and yeah. this looks very, very similar to Bernard's Watch. No way. And uh, Yeah, you were like, no, no way could this actually. And you tapped the button on top and the world around you froze. Like everything was frozen, except for you. You could walk around. You could like someone was do- uh, doing a jump rope and they were uh-huh. hot hovering in the air someone was about to lick an ice cream but they weren't quite licking it because they were frozen solid and you were like wow i have this amazing watch that can stop time good pa- package to receive <laughs> It, it really was like it had no return address on it uh you don't know where it came from it was in some fancy packaging so yeah it could have come from absolutely anywhere it, it was definitely meant for me though my name was definitely on the yeah the your, your name was like printed across the entire thing in big bold letters you know this this was meant for you and after this like you you're at work before everyone you stop time as you wake up Take your time, you're leisurely, you get dressed, you get ready, have breakfast as many times as you want. And then you take a leisurely stroll all the way to work and start time again. And people are just coming in because somehow you're always late. But no, people are coming in and you are on time. This sounds amazing. It sounds like a dream. I mean, what what else did you do with with this uh, magic watch? Did you play lots of pranks? Well, I maybe maybe not at first, but once I got pretty confident with it and how how to use it, and, and knowing 
maybe people's habits or what I could get away with as well yeah maybe maybe I could you, you, you started to abuse it after a while like first of all it w- was just to get you to work on time but after a while you were like oh well you know I could uh, get myself a free drink from the bar I could uh, yeah. I could I could stop time and switch people's clothes I, I, <laughs> I I'm trying to think of pranks that you could do but I these are very like lame. Really freak people. No, 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 no. It is. It's kind of you want to do a subtle things to maybe freak people out, but also really bizarre things. And and like you mentioned, that person skipping with the rope, you could just take the rope away. Like, and when you start time again, they just jump in and then realize like they jump for no reason. They they start thinking that they're going a bit mad. Like, what? Why? Yeah. They, they ha- thought they had the rope. What happened to the rope? You know, anyway. Do you have any enemies, Jess? <laughs> Oh, um, you could play so many pranks on your enemies. I'm trying to think. Yeah, maybe. Oh, it's it's the power that that, <laughs> that comes with this watch. Is is it sounds a bit like a drug as well. Like the more you use it, the more you're likely to abuse it. And uh, it's it's yeah. Well, that that's the thing, Jess. You you were using this watch so often, uh, and you were abusing it. I mean, at one point, you just walked into a bank, took <gasps> like handfuls of money, no, took I them home know. with you. Oh, it Do you does not sound remember? Like me. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been, yeah. <laughs> Could mm. have been. I see behind you stack there are stacks of money. <laughs> you're you you're actually sitting on a stack Maybe. of money made into a chair. Yeah, no, it's my throne of, of cash. Yeah. Oh man. Your cash throne. But yeah, well yeah, I would have had to have used it loads because I've had this bad habit, you see. This habit has forced me to rely on this watch so much so that I I I just using it all the time throughout the day. Yeah. And yeah, I can yeah I can see this this happening. But eventually, um, you stop time, and uh, you're actually going to use use the watch for good. Finally, you see someone is uh, about to fall into the road where an oncoming car is coming, and you stop time. You move them out of the way. They're light as air when you move someone in stopped time. It's amazing. You can just like push them. And they're like a feather. They glide out of the way. You're like, yeah, I've done a good thing. But as you're moving this person out of the way, you drop the watch because you've you've got both hands busy moving this person, and the watch breaks. There's a crack across the watch. Wait, wait. So it's it's broken, but whilst time is frozen. Whilst is that what time you're is frozen, yes. Oh no. So you are now trapped in a frozen world, and you you look around. You, you everything's still frozen. You you pick up the watch. You quickly try and tap it. Nothing happens. The world stays frozen, and you you live like this for about a week uh, in this frozen world. Um, you just you try fixing it. You try doing all sorts of things to make this watch work it doesn't work then one day as you're contemplating what to do next like what what can i possibly do a man appears and the man i don't know if you remember in bernard's watch i'm 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 really uh i'm really appealing to all of the 90s kids out there who watch this one specific show Mm -hmm. yeah no but i believe there was a postman or a milkman I cannot quite remember, but he uh, was the one who was in charge of time and the watch and everything. And he would help Bernard whenever he got stuck. Uh, and he appears to you and he's got like a um, this is a different guy. It, it, it's your version. Um, he's got mm-hmm. like a moustache that look. But the uh, two points of the moustache are like a clock's hands. Oh, um, OK. Um, I'm just thinking a bit like the guy from Be- uh, Beauty and Beast. Was it? I can't remember his yes. name. It's yeah. Clocksworth or whatever, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. Lumiere, the other one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the clock man. Yeah, that clock. He had, he had yeah, his face was the clock's face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, he's basically that guy, but in real life. And mm-hmm. uh, he appears to you. He says, oh, what have you gone and done? You've gone and frozen <laughs> the entire world. And he pick, takes the watch Forever. off of you and he, he, he has a look at it. He says, I can't make time work again properly. But if I twist this and glue this into place, then I can set the world so that it all starts up again. The only problem is it's going to work at double speed. So now you've got okay. a choice to make, Jess. Either you live in a world that is frozen and you're the only living person technically i mean everyone's living but they're frozen 
or you can live back in the real world and everything will run, but it will run at double speed. So everything's going to happen twice as fast. So which will probably mean that I'll be like twice as late to things because I won't have the watch anymore to rely on. It's not like I can go back to the way, like to using the watch, the way I was using it. The watch. Yeah. Yeah. The watch is oh, now man. useless. Yeah. Apart from it could be the trigger to go super fast. I don't know. <laughs> I have I mean, to say, like, it's a, it's a bit like the world was going quite fast before the pandemic hit, and then it was like a massive pause button. People described it, especially when it first happened, as a big pause on the world. And then, you know, you get people saying, oh, did we realise, you know, how fast and how... Uh, you know we didn't really process or take took for advantage like advantage of what we had to for granted sorry of what we had and yeah like we didn't know how good we had it until till it was gone it's gonna it's a bit like that i imagine and and knowing i've got the power to go back to i say go back but go go to a time where we are rushing through life and arguably people do that as a normal time normal time speed is it I, is it really good idea to go to that i i feel that life goes by very quickly anyway and mm. um like we say we we hadn't spoken for years but it didn't seem that way because life just gets in the way and goes super fast so having things go at double speed like uh, a, another thing you would basically in your perspective you would live half the amount of time that you would otherwise Oh my goodness, yeah. But if you were in a frozen world, you would just live indefinitely. Or no, you probably wouldn't live indefinitely. You would still age and grow old in this stopped time world. Yeah, because I'm not stopped, but everybody else is stopped. And yeah. Does that... Because I've got questions. <laughs> yeah, fire away. The, the guy's still standing there uh, waiting for you to make your decision. So you can ask him whatever you want. Yeah, so I would ask him... Well, I don't know if I'd know this already um, from using the stopwatch for so um and being around for a week do yeah. people age like in the stopped time like could i could i stop time and in that stop time it could be a good few hours before i start up again before the watch broke and um, would people then be like hungry by the time i wake them back up again or are they just at the same moment no that's so when they so so the rest of the world is is basically paused so everything mm. will when it resumes everything will be as it was when it was paused you on the other hand will continue to age and feel hunger and uh, oh, live your normal life but you're in this frozen world okay and when you, you... say things are going twice as fast if, if the clock changed um yeah we went back does that mean people are talking twice as fast and yep. people eating twice as fast people are rushing and walking around like they're like running everywhere almost it's basically so if you if you watch a video on youtube at double speed it's like that yeah. but for everything around you <sighs> i feel exhausted just thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a tough one i don't know i feel like for the good of everybody but would i be doing them a favor by waking them up i feel like no one's going to want to live in this or be happy in this rushing around world i mean you don't know like maybe once once you have lived out your life in the frozen world and you've, you know, passed away and everything's got run its course, the world might start up again. Ah, could I? How long is this man sticking around for? Could could he? Oh, he's he's got time. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> yeah. OK. So you um... can think about this as long as you want. I mean, I would th I, if I was in a frozen world, I know that like i know i would know for a fact that i would never have to work again a day in my life i could go to any supermarket the food is always going to be fresh because it's not going to age or you know it, time is not oh. passing for the food so you can have as whatever food you want you can't actually watch things because yeah i was gonna say like because when, when you said about the watch breaking i was like oh i would just go on youtube and, and watch one of these like how to fix this stuff <laughs> um a pocket watch but i yeah then the internet would stop like <laughs> wouldn't be any, yeah. like i yeah nothing's running i guess i think you'd just get bored relatively easy relatively quickly i think if i was if i was in my but i like my own company though i don't know not right away i i'd read all the books probably and yes you can definitely read take my time over that and then you could write yeah yeah you're right i wouldn't have to work and trying to think oh i feel like i could live a good portion of my life and then reach a certain age where i do want to slow down myself no, it'd be the other way around. Like I wish, I wish it, if you have the option of like, living a really fast life and then pressing the stopwatch to go having slowing it down. But no, you, you, that's not one of the options. I'm not that's, that, that. that's not the predicament you've got yourself into. Yes, yes. that's right. It would be an easier choice to make. <laughs> <laughs> 
I I don't know. It sounds like a storyline that they had in <laughs> in, the, in the Vampire Diaries. Did you ever watch that? Um, it's I've on not Netflix. Seen that one. You, you want to watch it? And there was a bit where these two characters got pushed to this alternate world where time had stopped. It was it wasn't quite a, like a Groundhog Day because they could. It wasn't the same day. Nothing happened the day, but it was just like deserted. There was no people. I mean, yeah. at least I'd be walking around and there'd be frozen people. You could you Granted, could arrange them. Yeah, I'm just thinking, could I could I make friends <laughs> with the people that I see every day? No, because I'd be talk- talking to myself, but with them, maybe. I mean, I you, you might go a bit crazy just being on yeah. your own and you I would just like make that. friends. <laughs> Yeah, You'd have yeah, them all that, sat around with I, you. And I, and I could be happy in my own little world that, like, and it would be my own world because I feel like it's all, all there for me because it is effectively time frozen. You could go on all the water slides at the theme park. You wouldn't be able to go on, like, anything that's moving. Yeah, I was, yeah. Does water run? Like, do, like, rivers flow in the sea? You know, like, no, it's... That, it's, it's all, like, just still. You can, like, pick it up and you can drink it but it's more like you take a chunk out of it with your teeth like eating oh wow <laughs> yeah really cool to like experience. solid water can i can i drive uh well the car wouldn't start it just wouldn't start okay no Even but you okay. but you've got all the time in the world you could walk anywhere you could walk across the sea right yeah if you wanted to go to another country, you could just walk there. It'd take you years, probably, but you could just walk it. You would be like Jesus walking across the sea. <laughs> yes, yes, you're right. It does sound really, really cool. And I think I would like to enjoy that until the novelty wears off a bit, I imagine. And I don't know how long that would be. It would be, it could be years before I've experienced all this really cool side of a frozen world. And if this time man is willing to hang around oh do you know what he's someone i can talk to <laughs> i mean I he, he's very much conversation but he, he does have a lot of time related business and other dimensions to oh, deal with right. he's he's basically he, yeah. he'll, he'll turn up if you suddenly decide yeah actually i do want the world to go doubly fast and i'd prefer uh, that right so i could call call on him for that Hmm. This actually is sounding like a good movie. I should have written this instead of made it into a scenario. <laughs> it feels like it feels like I've seen it. To be honest, I feel like I've seen it, but, but I don't. I still feel guilty. I feel so guilty about not having like not pressing play on the rest of the world, even if it was double time. Because I feel like some people would enjoy the fast pacedness of life if they could live it. So, and for for myself, like. I don't know. You it's would... a sacrifice, I know. But then I feel like I would have had it so good and it, I was wrong to have dropped it. <laughs> I, don't know. I was saving someone's life, though. So I do feel like it wasn't totally my fault. No, you did You did do one good deed before the world was Just ruined. the one. <laughs> <laughs> when I decided to become a superhero and use my powers for good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I feel like just because there are people listening, I'm going to have to say I would I would press play on the rest of the world. Although I don't know if it's a good thing or not. I still I'm on the fence about it because a very double doubly fast paced world isn't necessarily a good thing. But I just think for the good of everybody else living, giving them a chance to live some qualities in that. Yeah. But if, if I wasn't on a podcast, I'd probably stick. <laughs> 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 for as long as possible um at least until i did that <laughs> I don't know. and then yeah and then in my in my old age i maybe asked to restore time and by that point i'd be probably in a care home and in, in a care home with twice as much time going twice as fast it's probably a good thing maybe yeah you wouldn't really you wouldn't like when you're in an old people's home you don't they don't really know what time of day it is or what yeah. day it is anyway so you like the you know it's morning then it's night time so what that's that's usual that's what i mean you. so maybe i would do that would be my plan of action oh, but then i'd have to live with the guilt whilst i'm growing old of everybody else just looking at the people because i'd be walking around seeing the people's faces of people that aren't living because they're frozen yeah there are some positives to time going doubly fast technology is going to advance very quickly people are going to be churning out content very quickly like films will be made quickly books will be written quickly yeah but, um, yeah, but you don't have enough time to appreciate these things you're not like there is that. To, to watch and read these things and to experience those things I don't know though. I know what you mean though. There'll be some advancements, definitely in medicine and technology, and yeah, yeah, and that can happen once I've lived my quiet life. 
<laughs> so I, th- I think you're leaning towards living out your life in this frozen world yeah, and then it's a selfish I know isn't it but I just or at least until the novelty wears off I think I would find it incredibly lonely because I mean it is lonely but then I feel like I've had good practice in a pandemic when you're, you're home for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. You, you say it's selfish, but no one else is going to know. Like, as far as they're concerned, time is just carrying on as normal. They don't know that time stopped. They don't remember any of, like, the hundreds of years or however long you've had. Yeah. So to them, it's like nothing's changed. They just carry on, but then suddenly everything's super fast. Oh, yeah. And they wouldn't, you're right, they wouldn't know what was going on. They just accept that as happening. Yeah, you're right. You've made me feel less guilty about it. But yeah, no, that would be my decision then. I'd, I'd like enjoy the, the stillness of time for, for a while. And then um, when I'm either bored of it or in my old age, I would speed things up there you go play play the system do both you've basically I am, picked both I am, I am, I am, i've picked both i know i have i've kind of cheated if you would twist my arm i feel like i would i would have to knowing eventually that when i died that time would go back to normal i would probably pr- probably <laughs> i'm trying to think oh i don't know now I, yeah most likely i would i would uh ask the time man to restore time doubly as fast and just accept uh, as punishment for uh not put in the pocket watch in my pocket when I went to rescue this person. Yeah, you just had it like flimsily in one hand as you were dragging a guy away from a car. That that was your only mistake. So yeah. I think I think the real advice we want to give here is keep your pocket watch in your pocket. Your pocket, yeah, absolutely. That's it's it's in the name, people. I mean, yeah, you put the pocket watch in in your pocket, especially when it's a magic one. Uh, but then you're right. Like if I would have seen this person about to cross the road, and it would have been a like a oh shit, press the thing. But why would I be rushing if I had the watch in my hand, knowing <laughs> that the time would was stopped? You, I could you have infinite time. time. Yeah, I I don't know, but it's I think it's my rushing nature because of being late all the time it's an impulse by then i still find i'm rushing even if it's a stop time in which case if i'm rushing around and so used to that maybe maybe i would be more inclined to start time up sooner rather than later because i feel like i'm used to rushing around a rushing around world is probably something i'm suited for even if it means i'm going to be twice as late Oh, does that make sense? Do you see what I'm trying to say? It's, it's that if I'm used to rushing around because I'm late, because I'm never when I'm late, I don't just like amble in. I'm usually out of breath. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, you've yeah. got you've got a good 10 minutes before you can actually do your work when you get there. You've yeah. got to like catch your breath, sit down, have something to eat, have a neutral grain bar or something. Yeah. 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 OK, I've changed my mind then. I'll do the I'll, I'll start the time up doubly as fast. That's what I'd ask the old wise. Is he wise, Mr. Time? Well, Man. yeah, of course he's wise. He's he's the controller of time itself. The, the Time Lord. I, he is I... a Time Lord. Yeah. <laughs> so the 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 Time Lord who looks like the character from Beauty and the Beast clicks his fingers and time goes doubly fast, and that is the world we're living in now. I've had to set this podcast to half <laughs> speed so that people can actually understand what we're saying. <laughs> Yeah, sorry guys about that, but it's 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 the it's the only answer there is. It's the the correct answer. It is um, the correct I've made answer. My decision. And, that no one yeah. can dispute you. That is correct. One hundred percent accurate. Yep. Sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carl, you've been traveling. Yes. Uh, this is this is when the world has opened up and it's normal-ish again, and you can you can go traveling. Not too far. You go you go traveling to Ireland. Have you ever been to Ireland? I've never been to Ireland. I've been to Wales. Okay. It's probably completely different. And that's yeah, almost, probably... almost like Ireland, but not quite in Ireland. <laughs> it's fine. Right. So yeah, you're on holiday in Ireland, and um, wonderful. I've always wanted to go there. Yeah. No, I've I've only been once. I've been to Dublin, but the part of Ireland you're in is it's very Irish. It's very green. Um, Can I understand the people there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not, it's not uh, a very heavy, thick Irish accent. Well, yeah. I don't know how rural we're talking, but yeah, no, it's um, yeah, no, you can understand them. You're you're okay. you're having a good time, and do you? And one day you go for a walk, um, in the luscious green. Are they valleys or is that Wales? Uh, See, oh, having ne- having never been to Ireland, I can't tell you. I know there's there's lots of farmland and mountains and stuff in um, yeah Wales. I was I was about to say Glen. Glen as well, but Glen's like Highlands. <laughs> That's Scotland. <laughs> yeah, Scotland. They're, they're all of these Scotland. places are so yeah, close. They, yeah, I know, but like, we what have they got in Highland? They've got the green 
fields and meadows. No, but the green, the green lands of Ireland. It's, it's meant to be very green, isn't it? It's a, gr- it's a green place. I yeah. mean, yeah, it, whenever I think of Ireland, I do think of the colour green. Yeah, no, me too. So that's where you are. You're in the green. <laughs> I am in fields of green. I'm strolling through fields of green. Yeah, through through glens and valleys and the green. And um, and it, it's just been raining, um, but it's stopped raining and the sun's coming out. Oh, so this beautiful. is beautiful, beautiful rainbow. You're seeing this rainbow. Do you see where I'm going? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the brightest rainbow you've ever seen and uh you've never experienced anything quite like it the colors are so vivid and you it's it kind of consumes you and you you realize that you're actually kind of standing in the rainbow not just having the rainbow going around you. yeah i know wow and you don't know if this is just the fresh air is getting to you or whether this is actually happening but you're you're enjoying it nonetheless you're yeah if having... i'm hallucinating if i'm hallucinating if, if there was like magic mushrooms in the field i don't care i'm enjoying myself <laughs> i'm not sure what you've had that day but yeah no. <laughs> you're yeah enjoying the sunshine and you know yeah you're kind of like dancing around losing yourself in the colours that sounds like me yeah I'm I'm doing an Irish jig or what I think is an Irish jig maybe maybe you are maybe you can hear music who knows it maybe you're yeah. making music I don't know but you're in the moment there and then all of a sudden you lose your footing a bit and you you trip over something you're not even sure what it was because like I say you were carried away in the moment yeah I'm up in the clouds yeah and then and then just like that it's like a light switch the rainbow disappears oh you've you've tripped over like a something solid and you're like what well, maybe that didn't happen maybe maybe that was just something i've made up or just like i say got got lost in the clouds a bit yeah um, i had and... been in the pub all day before this <laughs> i mean you, you say <laughs> i was dancing i was <laughs> stumbling yes you're just stumbling through town no. yeah and you like for a minute you like you get up from the floor and dust yourself off and think okay it's just that and you're about to take off and uh, and you hear this voice that oh. says hey uh, hello <laughs> yeah he's from he's from the the green i don't know what the green is called but he's, he's in the green and in the grass and you're like and the grass is quite high so you've got to kind of look around you're not even sure again if you're kind of hearing things but i'm not gonna do an irish accent but he has an irish accent but. okay we'll all imagine everyone in your heads at home imagine every word jess says from now on is with an irish accent oh no please do he says hey you 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 great big thing you because you're big obviously then Com- he is, compared and, and to this yeah this, yeah and you're looking around in the grass and, and he comes out and you realize that it's a it's a leprechaun because you're an island obviously you recognize him right away because of the he's dressed in the green and um, dressed in green has he got a big ginger beard yeah that's right and four leaf clover yeah um in fact he's holding one of those and yeah anyway and uh he's really mad at you because you've just broken the rainbow and it turns out that you the thing you tripped over was the the rainbow switch whatever it was, <laughs> it was like oh a, like a pot of gold maybe or something maybe it was co- coins or something you'd knocked over and if i just destroyed all rainbows forever. well this particular one oh yeah. just this one oh wow well, I don't know maybe maybe you have who knows you'll have to wait and see if another one comes up you'll know if it's been raining and the sun comes up and if a rainbow doesn't appear it's still fault jess i murdered a rainbow you i did. feel terrible and now i've got and an it's... angry leprechaun shouting at me exactly this is the situation you're in and you know what it's not just you, you that was enjoying that rainbow there'd be people from miles and miles around who would be able to see that rainbow like i'm talking like little kids that'd be like oh look like to their parents there's a rainbow when when he goes to point to the rainbow the rainbow is gone because you've kicked over this pot of gold and like you know there's it's, and everybody was enjoying that rainbow up until the point when you like a light switch switched it off and the little and, uh, kid cries yeah mommy where did the rainbow go yes, exactly you're painting a really good picture here but yeah no it is it is it, there's children everywhere like from miles around that have been watching that rainbow and not just children i think adults enjoy rainbows too i always like it it brightens my up my brightens I, up my day when i see one well you you know how much i enjoy rainbows i <laughs> dance inside of them yes you were having a really good time so you've done a terrible thing i so have i feel there's awful. no one he's he's really pissed off at you and you know quite rightly angry um so i'm afraid Oh, he's gonna he's gonna curse you he's gonna put this curse on you because he's he's annoyed and but he also realizes it it was an accident so he's giving you a choice of a curse okay Th- thank you my little <laughs> green friend 
does he take offense to that i hope not <laughs> I, was to say, I was like oh oh dear maybe maybe he won't give you a choice now <laughs> my, my handsome little green friend <laughs> yeah, so here's your here's your choice of a curse basically so have you heard of a thing called the luck of the irish the luck of the irish yes well he's going to curse you with the opposite of that he's going to give you the bad luck of the non-Irish. Are you Irish? No, you're not. You know, I'm not no. Irish, no. <laughs> so, yeah. so the yeah, the bad luck of the non-Irish. Um and he's gonna so yeah, that's this is what it's basically what that means is like you're gonna become really unlucky. So you'll never ever be able to play the lottery. You won't be able to gamble. We've been no good at that kind of stuff. Um you'll know you can guarantee every day that something shitty or bad will happen. Yeah. I'll I'll be at some point. I'll I'll be walking along and they'll just they'll just happen to be a banana peel on the ground. I'll slip yeah. up and yeah. Yeah. doesn't matter where I go. I, c- I could be in my front room and there'll just be a random banana peel on the floor. I'll stop buying bananas, but there'll still be a random banana yeah, peel just true. out of nowhere. No, uh, and there'll be, you know, and and you might get used to this because you might just think, OK, because you're guaranteed at least one unlucky thing will happen to you each day. Yeah. But there's no limit either. So, for example, it could it could be your wedding day and it could, you know, you can guarantee that it's probably going to be raining all day on your wedding day. You can have of it in course. the middle of the summer and it will just like be that song. miserable. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, like that song. But that might not be it. It might be that you forget the wedding bands and or the wedding gets interrupted by something. And it's it's none of it's in your control, but it is all your fault no. because you're the unlucky person here. Yeah, I would I would suddenly have diarrhea on the day at the altar. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, uncontrollable. Totally. I'd have to run out of the church. Everyone would be like, what's going on? What's going on? The priest would be incredibly annoyed. I would then yeah. get hit by a car as I run outside to find exactly. a public toilet. No, no, um, all these things. And and like and they they might be small things and they might be big things like you, what you just described is pretty horrific, <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> but it could well happen. I couldn't. Yeah, it's something that is going to massively hinder your daily life. Definitely, yeah. Much get used to it, and much as you'll be able to explain to people, I say explain to people that yeah, you've. Um, I pissed off a leprechaun after killing a like, rainbow. Yeah, so this isn't, this isn't something you can control, but it is your fault, and yeah. I don't know. So that's one one curse. Yes. Bad luck of the Irish. The other curse <clears throat> is you live, live a normal life, but you can only speak in limericks or rhyming couplets. <laughs> so, oh, dear. <laughs> whatever comes out of your mouth will have to be either a lim- in a limerick form yeah. or a rhyming couplet. So, yeah, so that's your other. I mean, again, that's going to be a big hindrance to your daily life. Obviously, um, if people ask you for directions, you'll have difficulty helping them out. And like you couldn't do some things like, I don't know, I'm trying to think. If you went for like a job interview, um, you'd have to answer each question in either a limerick or a rhyming couplet. You might be able to explain to the people or have like a disclaimer that you can hand over to the people interviewing you to say that. I've been cursed by a leprechaun, so this is yeah. why I speak this way. But I will answer the questions as best I can. <laughs> I really want this job, something like that. But like, yeah, so that you might be able to find other ways of communicating, but like, primarily you can only speak in limericks or. Okay, so I go for a job interview mm. um, at a lawyer's firm because I, I I I'm no big city lawyer, but I I would like to become a lawyer one day. Okay. And they ask me, you know, what what what, what qualifications do you have? Now I need to try and think of a rhyming. <laughs> <laughs> See, I thought I thought this one like for yourself because you're you 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 know you might be you could be creative with it. You could be really good at uh, and it, it could be entertaining. And do you know what people might respect you in an interview if you can come up with really good answers in a limerick form or <laughs> rhyming couplet. <laughs> I'm not sure how useful that would be in in a courtroom, but like when you're trying to defend someone. <laughs> But, um, you know, people can admire the creativity there, but it it, it does afford you those skills, that skill set. You'd become really good at it, but it would also be really irritating for anyone who's around you all the time. Yeah. If- this man is guilty, don't you see? <laughs> this man is guilty. Listen to me. Yay. See, <laughs> I, I gave you the rhyming couplet because I figured that would be like, a good, <laughs> like easy one to demonstrate. But um, but yeah, it would you it would take you a while to communicate, I guess, a lot longer than normal. Yeah. But, uh, so but if you 
if you had the if you had the other curse though in a job interview, you most likely probably wouldn't get the job because of the bad luck. Yeah, it would it would be very like even if I did get the job, it would be because this job is a terrible job and I would hate it. That's the only reason I would get the job. Yes. Otherwise, it, if it was a job I really really wanted, definitely I would not get that. Um, I I don't know because. Speaking in rhyming couplets all the time, people would not like me. No, you wouldn't be very popular. Would you? Would you just? Do you think you'd just become mute? Like you just wouldn't <laughs> choose to speak? Like you just have to write everything down, or as I say, communicate in other ways. But it would be a quiet life. <laughs> would it? Would it be that um, it came naturally, or would I have to think before I said it? Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to say these things. I would have to come up with the rhyme before. Oh, I don't know. Or is it I just I? Like... I'm trying to speak normally, but it's all coming out as a limerick or a rhyming couplet. I think you'd have to. I'm going to make you work. It's going to make the curse a little worse. You, you, you'd have to work out what to say, and and it's like not having control of what you're saying. Almost, if it wasn't going to rhyme, or if it wasn't going to fit in the format, then the words just wouldn't come out until it did fit the format. If you see what I mean. So you, yeah. you, it's you, you're forced to say it in a rhyming couplet. Or a, or a limerick um, but you've got to take your time working that out and but eventually you become really good at it because over it, time it would it would become second nature yeah yeah you'd have like some go-to phrases and like that you would just use in everyday like if you're asking them, going to the shop to get milk and bread you'd say the same limerick <laughs> to the shopkeeper hello to you my name is ed where do you keep your eggs and bread <laughs> exactly i would be like dr zeus i guess <laughs> yeah exactly and hey you might eventually become this much much loved person in town because because you're well known for this gift set i guess this skill set I, I could become a well-beloved children's poet you could you could but you just won't be able to switch off this is the issue that's like, the problem yeah and for a lawyer like it would be really difficult i think to make cases stick or at least persuade a jury who've never met you that you're serious <laughs> you're not crazy yeah <laughs> you're having to speak this way so i don't know if you'd find much work or people would want you to represent them or I, I don't know but maybe you'd have a reputation yeah maybe i should give up my dream of becoming a lawyer and focus on something more in the arts you know but become a poet or I, I, see would would it work if i was writing something down would that have to be in rhyme as well or is it only when i speak you can you can write and yeah it's only when you're it's only when you're speaking so this is what i mean you can find other ways to communicate you can yeah. write, uh, communicate through your writing and like what you talk are you thinking about going around with like a whiteboard around your neck oh, possibly <laughs> like, yeah that would that would be <laughs> useful <laughs> have a big whiteboard around my neck uh, it would have to hmm it, yeah i wouldn't be able to write many words on it because people would have to come in very close and you're not allowed to get too close to people these days so it's something that you could i could just hold up and show someone it would just be like what just <laughs> very angry with lots of exclamation marks and then just show it to anyone who comes near me yeah. and then it would keep people away yeah yeah you would yeah exactly and then they wouldn't they wouldn't ever have to learn about my terrible curse yeah i feel like though that you could you could explain that like i say with disclaimers if you were going and you could have it already printed you know you like we talk about job interviews like if you were doing an application you could put it in when it says do you have a disability you could effectively say i've been cursed yeah i mean so, if if, if but... they they may not believe that I killed a rainbow and was uh, cursed by a leprechaun. That's my only thinking here. But I could pretend that I'm a mute. Yes. That might be that they might believe that a little more than you were cursed. I was cursed by a leprechaun. You're right. You're right. Yeah. That's that's probably the most acceptable thing to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the is anyway. So I th yeah. yeah I think an, in everyday society I'm going to have to pretend that I can't speak if I if I take this option. I mean, would, would you would you choose to or would you would you become this character that you know this uh, I'd, yeah this character that that has this ability to come up with limericks and rhyme couplets very quickly and and I think like children might like you like you were saying become a children's author or um. I could, yeah, I could get that job where you go to libraries and you read out poetry to children to get them interested in books and things. That, yeah, yeah, that could be my profession. It's I like a probably... magic show almost, that like you're just telling stories, but through limericks and rhyming couplets. Listen up, kids, take a look. What have I got in this new book? <laughs> exactly. And it I... is good. You've got a good voice for it too. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah. I'm really excited. It doesn't sound like a, much of a curse, actually. I no, thought it was going to be a really good one. I was, I was so sure you were going to go with the bad luck. <laughs> you, well, I mean, after you've described like all these things, like multiple things that, that are bad that can happen to me, I, I won't be able to get a job. I'll get fired from the job I'm in, probably. So many bad things could happen to me on a daily basis. And this is every single day for the rest of my life. Like, if it was just for yeah. a week, maybe, I could put up with it. But, I, no, I and, think... And they could be little and small. Like, you could be, like, you could have just cooked your favourite meal. And then when you go to open the cutlery drawer, you've got, like, 10,000 spoons. And all you really need is, is that knife. Um, exactly, for, yeah. For dinner and stuff. <laughs> and if you were going to cook a meal for the first time ever, like, it it wouldn't go well. Like, you, you know straight away that it would burn to a crisp but are there um, any other lyrics in that song that um <laughs> apply to, to <laughs> that, are, that will apply to my life if i take this curse you, you could you could meet the man of your dreams and then meet his beautiful wife like, oh, <laughs> so not, that's always the way yeah that's really really unlucky i mean that is yeah it's a little yeah. ironic don't you think it, it maybe <laughs> anyway no. It's not irony at all. No, um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I, the luck, the luck one. I don't know. Is there any way you can't? I know you can't control it, but could you manage your expectations with the bad luck? And like, so you're not disappointed so much. So you're just accepting a bit. I mean, it sounds pretty miserable, but there might be. I don't know. There might be some enjoyment. No, you find some mm-hmm. enjoyment in life, but not, not. It's not continually I, like you, you know that some bad thing will happen. Yeah, day. I could find some enjoyment, but having that much bad luck, I, I don't know if I could deal with it forever. I think I could probably live a fairly normal life. Uh, it would just be there would be lots of misunderstandings where I would do something and people would take it the wrong way, and I would. I would lose a lot of friends, I think, and yeah, I, I no. think ultimately it would make me unhappy. Whereas being this guy who's constantly rhyming, like I would probably make more friends, and pe- and you know, I would I would be a lot happier because I'm reading poetry to children and um, bringing a yeah, little but, light to the world. But then wouldn't it frustrate you because you could because obviously you could write and you're still thinking like normal. It's just yeah. you can't communicate. It that, would be it would be, be hard to communicate. I would. Like you say, I, I would have a whiteboard around my neck if I just wanted to have a normal conversation with people. Or if I wanted to have like a proper conversation with someone, I would just write out a letter and send it to them. Yeah, maybe. But I just think it would be difficult for people to take you seriously as well. I just think if you always talking to children, like I know they're going to be your audience anyway if, when you become this writer. And I, I was just thinking as well, actually, the bad luck thing wouldn't be well for you if you were a, um, a, a lawyer as well. You wouldn't win any of your cases. I would like, not win a single case case no yeah you really have to do that yeah you're right whereas i i don't know it, it would still be a hindrance i think in everyday life when you're when you like you're saying we're communicating and just not just communicating but being taken seriously and, and getting your point across and would take so much longer as well when you're when you are ordering ordering yeah when you're ordering off, off a menu how would you do like it just take you forever to get through the courses like i think yeah. if you were and I guess you develop patience. Come here, waiter, <laughs> read my lips. I shall have the steak and chips. I, th- I think I could pick it up quite quickly, actually. actually yeah, you're really good at this. I, I should have known. No, I know. The rhyming couplet definitely gave you a, like, a win there. If it was lyrics, it would be a little bit different, yeah. more difficult, but um, take you a little bit longer. But yeah, you're fine. <laughs> you could be really happy, actually. I can imagine you doing this for a day or two just to test it out. Okay. Yeah, this, this, yeah. this maybe. Yeah, this will be my new thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and rhyme in everything I say. I should have done from the beginning of this podcast. I should have done the entire thing in rhyming couplets. <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to keep up with you, but I, I can imagine you like as soon as I like, you're able, you'll go over to Ireland and you'll be like running in the fields of green, and you'll be looking for this leprechaun now because you, this sounds like such a fun thing to be doing and being careful. I mean, yeah, this is clearly that you have just predicted the future, and this will <laughs> yeah. happen to me at some point soon. So yeah, I just need to book this trip to Ireland and do it. Yeah. yeah, I know. I I was so convinced that was like the worst out of the two, but okay, maybe. Did well, I, I have... forgot my audience? I forgot I was talking to you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's, he's brilliant at this. So yeah. 
Anyway. Well, there you go. Everyone at home knows what they should do if confronted with an angry leprechaun. Choose the rhyming yeah, couplets. Or, or, and... Yeah, do that, yeah. I'd take better care when you're dancing in a rainbow anyway, to begin with. But also, if you find yourself in that situation... Yeah, I think both the... the advice for both of our scenarios were just be more careful. Like, you should have kept <laughs> your watch in your pocket. And <laughs> yeah. I should have yeah. not danced in a rainbow that was very reckless of me um so yeah that's that's the advice i think people should take away from this episode be more careful yeah Um, yeah take your time guys be patient and time isn't something to play around with you know you you should just don't be late i I think you're right fantastic well we've done a good service here today um and if people disagree with anything we've said then they can let us know in the comments and if you enjoyed the episode then please follow and subscribe to the podcast on patreon you can find it at patreon.com slash if you had to though where you can find all the newest episodes and you can follow me on twitter at kyle m bennett that's kyle underscore m underscore bennett with two n's and two t's this has been if you had to though i've been kyle and i've been jess thank you for having me that's you're most welcome. It was very fun. <laughs> so, so good.